Hello everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Today, the subject of my lecture is identifying class patterns. And then after this, we will also discuss determiners. So here are a few uh, class patterns which have been given uh, on page number 20 of the book, which we were discussing in the class as well. That is long man student English grammar. So the first pattern, uh, the first uh, class pattern here is S plus V plus SP. <clears throat> it does mean subject plus verb plus subject predicate. And the second pattern is subject plus verb plus direct object. Third pattern is subject plus verb plus adverbial. And fourth one is subject plus verb. Fifth is subject plus verb plus indirect object plus direct object. And next is subject plus verb plus direct object plus object predicate. And then we have subject plus verb plus direct object plus adverbial. So these are seven class patterns. You will always find class in, 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 in these patterns, all right? So uh, these are correct. The, these, these patterns are syntactically and grammatically correct patterns for clauses. <clears throat> so here we will uh, label, uh, we will identify the class patterns from among the, uh, in, in the following sentences, and we will also label them as intransitive, monotransitive, copular, diatransitive, or complex transitive. We have discussed these terms in our, in our class as well, when we were taking the classes on the campus. Um, of course, intransitive, intransitive, in intransitive verb action cannot be passed from subject to object. Uh, therefore, it cannot be changed into passivize. And in monotransitive verb, you have one uh, transitive verb. All right. In popular, you have verb like is, seems, was, were, uh, becomes, etc. And in diatransitive verbs, you have two objects. Whereas in complex transitive verbs, you have uh, object and uh, you can also have object predicate with object and you can also have uh, uh, adverbial with object as well. <clears throat> Here, uh, as a case, uh, for example, in the first, uh, first example, it has been solved for us already. Uh, let us identify the class pattern in the first sentence which has already been identified for us. And let us also see the uh, elements of the class and let, let us also have a look at the label of the class pattern. Uh, we can label the class as monotransitive, diatransitive, et cetera, only especially, especially by seeing, by looking at, well, first of all, looking at verb, then at the other elements of the class. And in the first class, you still haven't answered my <clears throat> dog question. You is subject, still is adverbial, haven't answered is verb or verb phrase, and my dog question is direct object. This is monotransitive class, and here we have S plus V plus direct DO pattern. So this second pattern has been has, has been applied on the first sentence, all right? S plus V, and then we have direct object. And this is monotransitive, why? Because it has only one uh, verb that is answered. You haven't answered my dog question, and then it has only one object, that is my dog question. So one object and one verb, so it shows that this is monotransitive. Let's have a look at the second example. <clears throat> the cheetah is the fastest animal in, in the world. So in this example, the cheetah is subject, is, is verb. <clears throat> the fastest animal in the world is a uh, subject predicate, all right? Why is this subject predicate? Because it tells us, it, 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 uh, stretches the information about the subject, all right? It tells us something about the subject, about the cheetah. 
Oh, so oh, which or who is the fastest animal in the world? The cheetah is the fastest animal in the world. So it does mean this is subject predicate because it, it stretches the information, it extends the information about the subject. So here in this sentence, we have uh, the class pattern is S plus V plus SP, all right? This first pattern has been applied in the in this example. And this, uh, and this is known as copular. Why? Because the verb is is. This is shows that this sentence belongs to copular category of the verb. I haven't gotten Chris his gift yet. So in this example, I is subject, haven't gotten his verb. Chris is indirect object. And, uh, and then his gift is direct object. Uh, so in the third example, we have the pattern is uh, subject plus verb uh, plus indirect object plus direct object. So here we have two objects in the third example. First one is Chris. Uh, first, first one is Chris. Uh, that is direct or indirect object, and second one is uh, his his gift, which is in the, which is direct object, and yet is adverbial. Mm -hmm. So here we have two objects. It does mean this is ditransitive, and the pattern applied in in the third example. And the third example is as plus V plus indirect object plus direct object. And this is pattern number E, all right? Pattern number fifth. And let us discuss example number uh, seven here because it belongs to complex transitive. Mm -hmm. In say example number seven, I would, uh, I would have called him a liar for sure. So here in this example, I as subject would have called is uh, uh, this is verb would have called his verb. Him is direct object. A liar is uh, a liar is object predicate because it tells us about him and him is object. So that's why a liar becomes object predicate. All right, op, and for sure is adverbial. And this sentence is complex transitive. Why? Because it has a direct object plus object predicate. So in, 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 in such examples in which you have direct object or uh, in which you have um, a direct object plus object predicate or you have direct object plus adverbial, uh, those examples, such examples belongs to complex transitive. And the pattern in, in this example is S plus V plus D O plus O P, all right? And the pattern number you can say uh, uh, F, all right? Pattern number, uh, say pattern number six. So rest of the example, you can solve them on your own and you can also check them at the end of the book as well. Let's move our attentions towards the next topic, which is determiner. Of course, uh, these are the three diagrams and we have already discussed them, discussed them in the class. So let's move our attention toward the next topic, which is determiners. Uh, types of determiner, first one is classifying determiners. So what are determiners? We have already discussed the definition and the examples of determiners in the class, but here we will extend the topic further. Determiners, of course, uh, narrow down the meaning or the scope of the nouns and pronouns, right? Uh, especially nouns. So here in, in, in the following paragraph, we will uh, insert a few determiners in the, in, in the blanks. Here is the description that what we are going to do in the next, uh, in the next uh, paragraph in the next blanks. Uh, we will complete the text by inserting an article the, uh, or an, or another determiner, for example, any, his, my, etc. And when the zero article occurs at the beginning of a noun phrase, uh, you do not need to insert anything, but for clarity, mark the zero article with the zero symbol. So where you do not need to use any article, you will just mark the symbol 
this symbol there that is zero symbol you can say that you will not use any article in that example uh, in that place and we will also find the gaps that are ambiguous uh, what are ambiguous gaps it does mean in the sense that more than one determiner is an appropriate choice there so we will also find such situations such places Uh, which are ambiguous why they are ambiguous because we can use more than one determiner in those uh, in those places here is the hint uh, for paragraph number 1 you can find the hint that we will use uh, the we will use a and etc uh, for how many times you can find the hint over here so let us complete the first paragraph mm -hmm. by inserting uh, the a and and zero symbol etc so when the unexpected appears to be all part of the plan so here we have filled the two uh, blanks next blank dash allen hutchinson reports so here this the, you will you will put zero symbol because you cannot put any article over here you cannot put a uh, uh, n or the y because this is proper name Allen Hutchinson reports on uh, uh, on the behind the scenes on the behind the scenes organization for yesterday's visit to uh, Edinburgh. Here again, you will put zero symbol because you cannot uh, put any article over here. Why? Because there is again a proper name afterwards. By dash Prince Charles. Again, you will put zero symbol here. then uh, dash police again you will put zero symbol here as well dash police motorcycles uh, dash police here again you will put zero symbol before police and then after police motorcycles police motorcycles wrapped into zero symbol action and again zero symbol uh, strategically placed plain uh, place plain clothes officers exchange again zero symbol last minute information over their walkie talkies but just as the as the security net began to tighten in the grounds of the palace of zero symbol or uh, hollywood house in zero symbol edinburgh yesterday a, a group of zero symbol japanese tourists made an unscheduled appearance so here we have completed the first text uh, by inserting a uh, and the and the zero symbol so what are the ambiguous gaps uh, in ambiguous gaps here you can find the ambiguous ambiguous gaps which is dash behind the scenes all right you can uh, actually put uh, you can actually write it like the behind the scenes information uh, all right and uh, you can also write it like uh, behind the scenes all right so here you have choice you can use the behind the scene and you can simply use behind the scenes organization so in the next text you can uh, you can actually complete this text on your own by following the hint number 2 all right so this is your task you can complete it on your own and in the next lecture we will discuss definite determiners the definite article and demonstrative uh, with the help of these terms and a for a cat for a situational generic or other etc we will discuss this topic in the next lecture thank you very much for watching if you have any question please ask me in the comments below or you can also whatsapp me thank you